Good day. Uh, my name is Anthony Walker. I'm CEO of Decipher. Tailings are waste materials created as part of the mining refining uh, process um, and they're stored in large embankments. So that's where the tailings storage facilities uh, come from. Tailings storage facilities and tailings storage is one of the biggest decisions that needs to be made around a mining operation. I think there are many challenges facing tailings facilities globally. I think it depends on product, it depends on construction, it depends on location. But I think one of the key challenges that Decipher would like to focus on is around data management monitoring, providing a unified uh, environment for lots of stakeholders to access information which is previously scattered around uh, the mining operation and held within particular silos. So Decipher providing a unified tool or a portal for people to get into that information is critical. So key challenges I think is just simply security, management, reporting, digestion, visualization and also integration of all of these different key technologies that are providing a Herculean amount of uh, information uh, to these operations. I think another key challenge um, around tailing storage facilities is obviously the component of safety. These dams do fail and while the percentages are low the impacts are really really high um, involve loss of life and it's been about a year since the last major Brazil disaster. I think using Systems like Decipher to facilitate a particular safety focus, i.e. try and do things remotely as far as possible um, and take uh, time in kilometres um, out of the business so that we're looking at structures and embankments remotely, we're deriving information remotely, we're processing it and where appropriate we're putting eyes on the ground uh, to go and have a look. I think that, that safety component is, is pretty key. The Investor Mining and Tailing Safety Initiative was established and chaired by the Church of England Pensions Board and the Swedish Council of Ethics of AP Funds. This was following the recent TSF failures and a group of investors representing more than about 13 trillion assets under management decided to act as an independent watchdog making a call for a new global TSF management standard and requested 727 extractive mining companies to disclose information in relation to their TSF facilities in the form of an online disclosure database and basically an investor register. In response to the call for a global standard, the International Council of Mining and Metals, RCMM, the Principles for Responsible Investment and the United Nations Environmental Programme, or UNEP, announced that they are reviewing with a draft standard released recently. It's quite interesting that 100% of the RCMM companies disclosed information. I think that's pretty, uh, a pretty telling uh, number. On the one year anniversary of Brimaldino's Tailings Dam failure, which took 250 people's lives, the world's first publicly accessible global database on Tailings Dams was launched. This database now brings about a new level of transparency to the mining industry, allowing public, regulators, institutional investors, researchers and local communities to view detailed information on more than 1,700 dams. This is categorised by location, by company, by dam type, by height, by volume, by risk, uh, in amongst a whole number of factors. I think it's a great integration of information that can start us on a journey to, to really understanding tailing facilities and involving a higher degree of research that is currently underway and that is getting geared up to be underway very, very soon. So this presented mining companies with a large challenge. One company that we've spoken to has estimated that it took about six weeks for one person to pull this information together, look at the format of the information, verify it and get it into a format that it can be disclosed and reported. So multiply that out by the number of facilities that companies could be operating um, and you get a very large number. So this has meant that mining companies need to concentrate on where the data comes from, is it correct, who needs to approve it for release, and is that data 100% accurate. That takes a lot of effort and a lot of concentration and is quite risky for those businesses. In order to mitigate that risk, um, we can start putting tools together that help collate that information and provide it in a format that can be easily ingested by things like the COE disclosure database and data portal. We find that um, these operations, um, whilst the data is stored and is inaccurate, putting it together in relation to the 69 questions that were asked um, is often not done. Um, so it was about 
uh, bringing that together um, and, and getting multiple different people to look at it and verify it. So that, that, was, a, that was a key challenge in this, in this process. A lot of companies' operations are not concentrated in, in one location, um, so they operate around the world. There's multiple languages, there's multiple time zones. So just the efficiency of being able to ask and receive that information and, and, and look over it is, is a massive challenge. Sometimes that information needed to be translated back into English because that was the reporting standard. Um, so just making sure that was done accurately and correctly and reflected what are often quite technical questions uh, appropriately. Preparation for the next round um, is obviously about looking at the data points that were collected last time, making sure that information is up to date and accurate, easily available in the right format. Getting that in a consistent uh, electronic format uh, will make it a massive difference. And then understanding when those dates are and, and getting the data back uh, timelessly. Um, and that involves making sure that the sign-offs are done uh, uh, at the right time. We see that using Decipher uh, can have a role in that. You are easily able to see what was reported last time and update that information. You can version your information so you can see what the report was last time in relation to what it is for this time uh, of disclosure. Because the information is electronic, it is easily able to be transported to the uh, reporting portal. In terms of preparation, um, I think something that would really help is operations thinking about how they want to report this. So physically conceptualizing what those reports would look like internally and externally, compare apples with apples and get that information out quickly. The spatial component within tailing storage facility monitoring and, and reporting can't be underestimated. We've seen examples of assets that have owned tailings dams over time. They've reported uh, those uh, jointly. Just having that information available on a map is a good step in understanding um, what you're going to report, when you're going to report, and how you're going to report on it. So systems like Decipher um, are able to give us a macro-micro view, um, which is a concept I like talking about. Macro view is, is really about satellite kind of level capture of information, where you're getting big chunky understanding of, of what's happening uh, on the ground. And then micro is, is the ability to then hone in on those areas of concern uh, with different technologies or, or, or different uh, uh, ways of acquiring information um, and really getting to understand those. I think there's a lot of exciting technologies out there like Glass Terra's um, LiDAR product, um, which is on ground, uh, smaller, cheaper devices that are able to be deployed quickly and give results back in, in near real time. The ability to put those into a system that, that manages information from end to end is, is critical. Decipher is doing uh, quite a lot of work in the landform side of things. Um, we've been doing a fair amount of work on waste rock dumps in Western Australia, uh, particularly looking at things like gully erosion and automatically calculating volumes out of that gully erosion um, after rainfall events. So looking at what levels of precipitation can start causing an impact on those waste rock dumps, how big those volumes are getting, um, and also tracking who needs to go and fix them and, and, and uh, uh, mitigate those, um, those changes in size. We can get a lot of that work done remotely from one LIDAR mission and then having people going out with tape measures um, and doing it that way. I think um, investment into algorithms such as tree counts or vegetation community identification uh, via drone are critical technologies that are going to move us forward in the rehab and tailings monitoring space. I think the macro and micro concept um, also exists in, in the um, agronomist space. You can use um, NDVI to look at your fields and, and, and pastoral areas. Um, uh, zone down into, into key areas, use plant and soil sampling to understand on the ground what's happening, and then treat with the right fertilizer at the right rate at the right time. So I think that micro and micro is, is not strictly just a mining thing. We can apply that obviously to a number of different areas, including waste and, 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 and waste sites. I think that's really exciting and, and something that the Decipher team is going to be looking at going forward.